Hey guys, Tapdog here with Little Alchemist Helper, and today I am back with part two of the Future of Little Alchemist series. I did my last video well, almost about four months ago in early September, and uh, today I'm back with some more information. I wanted to talk about what changes have come to the game in the last four months, um, as well as what changes are coming in the near future, as well as in the, um, the distant future with uh, the next game and the next iteration. So um, I, before I go any further, I first have to give a special, special shout out to Taco Cat, who redeemed a get a shout out on our next YouTube video for 20,000 channel points. Uh, he said on his comment, I finally saved enough. So congratulations, Taco Cat. Thank you so much for your support. And uh, I hope you enjoy this special shout out that you're getting right now. <laughs> yes, look at all those dogs and the uh, pog champs. I love it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, so I just had to share that one because I thought it was great. Uh, let's see. Before I continue on, let me uh, hide that again because now I got to get to the good fun stuff. So today I'm going to be covering a couple different things. Um, some good, some bad, and some in between. <laughs> <laughs> the, the first kind of section I'm going to talk about is stuff that came from not the owner of the game. The owner of the game is Monty from Monumental, but he's got his lead developer working on the game. He's active in our Discord, and his name is John Eric. So a lot of this first section I'm going to talk about are comments that he's given to us. He's the one that probably knows the most about the code. Uh, Monty knows quite a lot as well, but uh, when it comes to the... Um, Updates that are coming to the game in its existing form. John Eric is the one who focuses on those for us. He's a lifesaver. If you also need to transfer your game from iOS to Android or vice versa, he's the one you talk to and you can contact him from our Discord. But um, I just kind of want to go through the list of things that he talked about. So first, holiday updates. Um, this is a video <laughs> screen grab from Mr. Andrew Sam from years ago. Um, this is what the Thanksgiving background used to look like when it was Thanksgiving time, and there was also a Christmas one. Now, John Eric tried to turn on the Thanksgiving holiday overlay um, around Thanksgiving, but it didn't turn on. And we asked him about it for Christmas too, and he tried to turn it on, but there's just no way to do it without a client update, unfortunately. So the good news is they do have these assets. They have the background designs and everything that you see there, uh, and the, the little decoration changes, like the, the pilgrim outfit for the mouse, and the, instead of research being the flask, it's now a turkey. Um, all of those assets still do exist, so they should be able to make those changes when Little Alchemist Remastered comes out, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But that's just one of the little updates I wanted to talk about first. Um, next... One of the other change of life updates that they added to this game was um, diamond upgrade packs. I don't have a photo for this. I don't have a photo for most of these, so I'm sorry. But uh, for the ones I do, I'll put them on the screen. But um, they added these diamond upgrade packs, um, I think sometime in September, and they cost 4,800 gold, which is six times more cost than the um, regular upgrade pack, but you get six times as much dust from those packs. So you're paying six times more, but you're getting six times more. Uh, for those with thousands of gold, th this is um, the quickest way that you can convert that gold into dust. It's not the most efficient though. Purchasing the 140 gold basic box or the 35 gold basic pack is still the best way to get the most dust per gold. Uh, to break that down for you, this is coming from Joe, so if Joe's wrong, you can blame him, but it takes 33... 0.33 gold to get one dust out of the upgrade packs, but it only costs you 29.41 gold um, to get each dust out of the basic box. So basically, there's about a 10% increase in dust if you go through the basic boxes rather than through the upgrade packs. The, um, the tax there is just because you're speeding up the process of recycling and purchasing by using those um, upgrade packs. So... Yeah, uh, Joe said 300 versus 340 dust per 10,000 coins. So thank you. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Joe. Um, another thing that we've changed, uh, packs are uh, obviously they're coming back into the game. They were in the game uh, when I did my last update in September. But now packs are on a TikTok release schedule. Uh, when they first started bringing them back, they would bring back two packs at the exact same time, and they'd both be in the shop for 10 days at a time. And then when they were gone, the next two packs would come in and take their place for the next 10 days. 
Now, as I'm sure you're aware, they're on this TikTok schedule where every five days a new pack comes in and every five days a new pack leaves. They still are in the shop for 10 days, but basically you're gonna be seeing new content every, every week rather than every other week. Um, and they tend to come out about nine o'clock Pacific time. Um, they used to come out about midnight, so that was another nice change. Instead of having to wait till midnight for most of Americans, it's now in the morning. I know I'm sorry for my Australian friends. Actually, Australia, you'd be fine. I'm sorry for, for anyone how that, that would affect negatively. Maybe people in, in Hawaii that wouldn't get it till like 6 a.m. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, another change in early October, um, John Eric changed the leaderboard for Arena. Now it updates continually instead of only once an hour. This is going to be really great news for those of you guys who are maybe in the legendary tiers and you want to make sure you make it into legendary three. You'll actually be able to see your ranking update live instead of hoping that <laughs> you've done enough to actually get the rank that you think you're showing. I know uh, for Joe, for example, he used to... Um, think that he was in a spot where he'd get into Legendary 3 or even the top 20 for the end of season reward, and then he'd end up getting 25th or something, and that's because of the uh, timing didn't update on the actual ranks. And so you, it would look like you were actually one rank when you weren't that rank at all. So um, that's a really great quality of life change they made. They did suggest to make that change for heroics as well. Um, I said I don't think it's worth it because... There's the pools there are completely different than the pools in Arena, and you only do your heroics at most three times a day. Most people probably only do it once, and so the, the rankings aren't going to change that much or fluctuate that much like they do in the Arena. So I don't think they've made any changes there, but they did talk about the idea. So if you'd like to see them update the heroics leaderboard to be continually updating rather than once an hour, comment down below. Let us know your thoughts. Next... Uh, at the end of October, the arena seasons were shortened. This is a big, big quality of life change. They used to be 16 weeks long. Now they're only nine weeks long. That means instead of only having three or so arena seasons per year, we now have closer to about six arena seasons a year, which means you're going to get your arena rewards for the season six times a year. They didn't change them either, so that's basically meaning we're getting double the amount of rewards, which is double the amount of gems, and double the amount of Onyx Fragment pieces. And this is just a side note. Um, congratulations to Jokovic. As of two days ago, he was the first person to complete an Onyx final form. He has the Barbarian uh, level five Onyx. And uh, watch out for him. I thought his deck was difficult before. Now he's got the Impossible card. So <laughs> you gotta watch out for that guy. He's, he's pretty crazy. <laughs> um, Next update, at uh, beginning of November, uh, one of the other great quality of life changes that uh, John Eric made for us was he uh, changed the amount of dust you receive when you recycle a level up card. Previously, when you would recycle a card, you would only get 25% of the dust for it. So I had a um, undead uh, fused that I didn't want to recycle because I'd only get like 25 dust for it. Well, now you get 90% of the dust investment instead of that 25%. So I got something like 150 dust instead of the 25 that I was supposed to get. So it was a huge, huge quality of life change. Um, if you've got cards, especially as you buy Onyx versions of cards, and maybe you've already had three fused copies or even just you know two fused copies and a, a level five of the third one, you can recycle those now and get a whole lot more dust. Um, so that's a, that was a great change uh, that it might not affect everyone, but as you gain more and more Onyx cards, you're going to start getting rid of your bronze and silver and maybe even your gold combo versions of those cards. And um, this is a nice, nice little treat that we get. To, uh, we don't have to waste dust on them or be afraid of getting rid of that card in the future. And then uh, next big change that's happened... My personal favorite, this is the one I've been waiting for for the last three, four, five years. Backfill combos have returned to the game starting in early November. The combo started um, with Monkey and Prehistoric, so when the Monkey Pack came out in my last video, I said, if you guys see the Monkey Pack in shop, that means backfills are coming back. And sure enough, that's when backfills started to return. Um, since then, 
most of the packs when they've come out, the gold combo card and the onyx combo card have had their backfills added. Um, now, you have to remember, when backfills apply, there's obviously combo card A, like monkey, for example, and combo card B, whatever the other card that it combos with, um, to make that backfill. Um, they've been skipping over directly backfilling combo cards that already have a lot of combos, like metal, for example. I think the Onyx metal card came out recently and they didn't add those. And instead, when they get to the other combo that's being added, like holy water plus metal, that's when they would make that combo. Um, when the, the lower quality combo gets added rather than the higher one that already has plenty of combos. So, um, a, a good example is... Well, Fairy just returned to the shop. It was just in the shop, and now it's returned, so it didn't get a backfill. But uh, Fairy Tail already had 106 combos, and I don't think it actually had any backfills. But if it had, it probably wouldn't have got them then. They would have waited until a lower-quality backfill combo would have been added for it. Um, speaking of, we're just over halfway through all of the backfills that I had added. I think I added about 400 backfills. It was 365. That's, that's the number because it was, it was a year's worth. <laughs> and um, we've gotten about 200 of them. So, so just over half of them have been added already. And I'm looking forward to seeing the remaining ones added. What are your guys' thoughts so far on those backfills? Um, as I've told people in, uh, in the Discord... The, the purpose of this round of backfills that I made was just to give quantity to the cards that were missing combos. Like Turkey Day got a huge amount of backfills. It only had 45 combos. Now it has an additional 45, so it's got 90 combos. With 45 combos, that's not a card you can use in your heroics or really even your arena uh, just because it's not going to combo with enough cards. But with 90 combos, it has a lot more combos that it can make, and it's a lot more viable for heroics and arena. So... Um, it's, I think it's great. I think in the future, I'd like to do a, a version 2.0 where we, instead of looking at the quantity, we start looking at the quality and there might be some combo cards, even gold ones or, or whatnot, that the quality of the combos aren't that great. At first I wanted to make sure we had the quantity so you could actually use it. Then we'll focus on the quality. If there's some cards that just are still F tier that need to be improved by the quality, That'll be the next updates. But for now, let's work on the quantity. Next, a uh, little just bit of information we got from Monty. Um, he told us in mid-November that there's about 2,000 people who play the game every single day and about 13,000 people that play it at least once per month, which for a game that's not been updated in three, four years. That's actually pretty good. He also said that the game is increasing in players weekly. It is not decreasing. So um, that shows that investing time and effort into this game is, is helping and being beneficial. I also uh, wanted to point out something else. I don't know where I said this. I might, oh, I put it in my, my, my last section here, but uh, I, I figured I should say this right now. They haven't said how much they paid for Little Alchemist, I don't think they, they will. I think that's a private matter that they can hold on to. But what Monty did share with us is that the game is already in the black, meaning that they're profitable from this game. So our support to them, our spending money on gems and, and um, watching ads and all that type of stuff um, and doing offers, if you have them, have all made this game profitable for them. So I think they're going to spend a lot of time on it in the future. And I'll talk about that a little bit more towards the end. Um, but it's just, it's exciting news to see that this game is starting to grow and, uh, I, I really want to see it thrive even more once we add additional players to the, um, to the, the new game. But speaking of that, that's a good segue. I had to drink a little bit. I was getting raspy there. And now we're going to talk about kind of the future of the game. Um, and this is more about content that they'd like to implement in the future. It could be soon it could be far in the future but these are just things that they've talked about that they'd like to do sometime i'll have a section about little alchemist remastered as well a little bit later but i'm guessing most of these things i'm going to talk about would happen in little alchemist remastered but they just didn't mention that specifically in their comments so one of the first things they talked about is and this is something that i think they can actually do now and they want to get our feedback on but that's going to be um this idea of expanding the ranks in Arena and Heroics. Um, so let me kind of show you guys a photo 
of this. So this um, first three columns of this is how the game is currently set up. Um, basically, people in Legendary 3 make up 0.1% of the population. So if there's roughly 8,000 people playing the game, we've got eight people that can be in Legendary 3. Um, if it went up to 10,000 people, then you'd have 10 people here. Does that make sense? What they'd like to do is instead, it'd still be 0.1% or a minimum of 20. So instead of having eight people in Legendary 3, we'd have 20 people in there. Legendary 2 would now have 100 people instead of 37. And Legendary 1 would be 140 people, or up to rank 140 rather than rank 52. You would also open up Master significantly here. I know this is kind of hard to see, so I'm sorry. Let me see if I can make this just a little bit bigger. There we go. Um, Masters would now, instead of only having 200 top 200 people, it'd have the top 600 players, which would make it a whole lot easier for people to be able to get the tiebreaker ability. And I'll talk about that in a little bit here too. But um, by expanding these ranks, it would make it a whole lot easier for players to um, get higher up quicker and be able to unlock their skills. So if, uh, if this is something you're interested in, you think it's yes, it's good, or you wanna see this change, this is something they can do now. So let me know in the comments of this video if that's something you'd like to see, or if you think it should be something different, let us know that too. Uh, let me take that off the screen, sorry. All right. Um, Monty said he likes the idea also of having to achieve a certain rank to buy alchemist types. He thinks that there could even be like silver, bronze, gold, and diamond alchemist types as well. I don't know what that means, but uh, that's something that he talked about. Um, he also thinks that there should be a minimum size for each arena tier and some alchemist types should be available at earlier tiers. Um, specifically, he said the, the alchemist types that have a rank 1, 2, and 3, so like Master Elementalist, Master Healer, um, level 1 should be purchasable in the gold rank, level 2 would be in the diamond rank, level 3 at Masters, and then anything that only has a single rank, like Tiebreaker or maybe Combo Master, um, those would only be unlocked at Masters. But with Masters potentially being expanded, that wouldn't be as big of an issue. I think there's a lot of people who get frustrated that you have to be in Masters to buy Tiebreaker, but if they've tripled the amount of people that are in that, I think it'll be a lot less of a problem. Um, so let me know what you think of that. I just heard Mrs. Tapdog. I think she's popping some champagne over there. She's excited about this change. <laughs> All right, uh, another change that they'd like to make, but this cannot happen in the current iteration, but they want to make this in the future. So this is probably something that would happen in Little Alchemist Remastered, is going to be research times. Um, research times are, are in the hard code of the game, so they can't be updated by Monumental, um, but they want to change them in the future. They agree with us that it shouldn't take you two days to research one combo. Um, I don't know what the research times will be changed to. A common theme that you'll hear as I talk about Monty is that he wants to get feedback from us uh, and the best place to do that is in our Discord channel. We've got about 1,200 people that are in there, active, talking. Um, and that's the place where, where we will post questions, get polls, and get feedback on any changes that are going to happen to the game. So that's, that's a good example of one. In my mind, I said i just like to see all the research cut in half. You can still keep the first one as an hour, but make the next one, instead of six hours, three hours, instead of 12 hours, six hours, instead of 24, 12, and instead of 48, 24. I think that would do tremendous work. It would drop down the amount of time for research in half, and uh, I think it would make, make lives easier. Um, one of the problems you get, this is a third, first world problem here, but as you gain more and more cards, it takes exponentially longer to research that card with all of your other cards, because you're gonna have more combos that it can make with more cards because you own more cards. So for new players, they can usually finish a card in a week. For me, it takes me about a month to finish a new combo card just because of the amount of combos it has. And I'm using all five research slots. So uh, it, it just gets worse and worse the more of the cards you have. I know it's a first world problem, but it's still something that could be useful because it, it, it's a chokehold from people preventing them from wanting to buy more. Why would I buy more if I'm already 
three cards back on research. I need to research these first before I buy another card type of a thing. A um, couple more ideas for the future. Um, something that Monty said is ties have to be redesigned in some way, but we can't do that in the current version of the game. Um, if they gave every engaged player tiebreaker, it's going to have a pretty immediate impact on gameplay, right? Because if everyone was able to win their games, if they died at the same time their opponent, there'd be a lot more wins in the game. Um, but he said he'd prefer to ease into a change like that uh, rather than just make a sudden change all of a sudden. So he does want to do something about Tiebreaker. And I guess the problem, we, we've talked about this a lot on our Discord, the problem with Little Alchemist is it's unique in its design approach. Most games are turn-based. I attack you, if I beat you on my turn, I win. Uh, but if I don't, it's my opponent's turn. If he attacks me and beats me, I lose. Little Alchemist, you attack and your opponent attacks simultaneously on the same turn. And so um, it makes it a little bit easier to have ties happen. And ties aren't fun. People hate tying. People want to win. So that's why Tiebreaker was invented for this game. But it's kind of a, um, a stopgap. And so his solution was just make Tiebreaker available all the time. Change the meta up so people can use a different ability rather than Tiebreaker. And then, you know, let's say everyone switches over to Master Elementalist. Well, maybe we need to do something about health, or maybe we need to change how Master Elementalist works. But the point is, get rid of the band-aid of, of just use Tiebreaker to, if you need to use that type of thing, make it available all the time, and then find out how to fix the new problems that arise from that. One other change that they've been talking about recently, and so this is something that you can also help us with, add your comments down below, is the idea of refills. So as you know, when you're playing the game, you can refill your energy, um, and right now it costs somewhere between eight and 10 gems. I can't remember the exact number off the top of my head. They'd actually like to lower that, so um, make it maybe only two gems to refill your energy. Um, and I think that'd be a good idea. I, I personally don't refill my energy at all, but um, I might consider it because then I can, if I'm really close to a leveling up type of a thing and refilling, I could get a couple more gold and then ref, uh, you know, refill my energy naturally and then get even more gold. It might be worth it. Um, but also they're thinking about increasing the gem cost for arena refills. Right now it only costs, I think, 10 gems to refill in arena. And uh, at the end of the season, people will purchase those because if they level up to the next rank, they might get 15 more gems. So for 10 gems, they get five gems back, uh, you know, as extra and also additional fragment pieces. But if it was at the cost of 20 gems per refill, uh, people that are buying it would only be doing it because they're, they're not thinking it through or something. So <laughs> that's one thing. They've also talked about maybe changing the gem, uh, gem refill rate for heroics. I think that's also at about eight to 10 gems. Um, and they would probably lower that one as well, but I don't know. I, I, it could go up, it could go down. I, I don't use that one myself. I, I don't think that's as important. It could probably stay where it's at. Um, so, anywho, those are kind of future tasks, but give your thoughts down below. Let me know what you think about refills. Do you want to see them changed, yes or no, and, and how much and why? But now we're going to kind of move into the next area, which is going to be Little Alchemist Remastered. These are going to be changes that are coming in the near future. Uh, I'll give you some, some a little bit more information on it, so I'm kind of excited uh, about a couple of these things. First, Little Alchemist Remastered is being built in Unity, um, which means they could potentially make a web-based version of the game or even a PC version of the game or put it on Steam or something. But um, Monty said they don't think they're going to, but it's definitely something that's possible to be done. Um, he did also say that he feels like cross-platform might be something that would be useful more in Little Alchemist 2. That could be a good feature benefit of that, like play anywhere on any device on Little Alchemist 2, whereas Little Alchemist Remastered would let you to be able to play on any mobile device. So um, it's, it's definitely possible, and I think if there was enough uproar, that's something that they could add in the future. But for now, um, the plan is just to, to have it on mobile. Uh, I've said this before, but I just wanted to reiterate, Little Alchemist Remastered should retain 100% of your progress. 
no idea about Little Alchemist 2, but um, Amanti did say he thinks they can provide something to loyal Little Alchemist players when Little Alchemist 2 comes out. Uh, again, Little Alchemist 2 is just kind of a in the thinking stages right now. That's probably years away, would be my guess. Little Alchemist Remastered is coming out a lot sooner, and I'll talk about that soon here, too. Um, they're using a company that's in Buenos Aires to develop Little Alchemist Remastered. Uh, it's a great team, and they've actually worked with Congregate, the former owners of Little Alchemist, for years. Um, they, they started working on it back in August, and um, I'll talk about that a little bit more. I have a special Q&A section where I have questions and answers that Monty gave me. But um, what I do want to say is um, because of this long relationship that they had with Congregate and they kind of have a little bit of knowledge with how this game works, um, they were able to uh, start working on Little Alchemist back in August, and it's, it's coming along pretty well. Um, that was, that was the fastest way that they could get the game up and running was by hiring these, these, um, workers in Argentina to, um, to build the game for them and they kind of oversee it. Uh, as of November, Monty said the only target that they're sharing for release for Little Alchemist Remastered at this point is that it's going to come out in the first half of 2022. Uh, things are going well, and they're making great progress. He'll share a narrower date range when he gets closer to release. Um, so that was back in November he said that. Um, he also said most of the changes that are going to be coming to Little Alchemist Remastered are going to be quality of life improvements, updates to some of the graphics, um, user interface improvements, bug fixes, support for different aspect ratios on phones, things like that. They probably won't make any major additions to the game before the game gets launched because they want to get it out as fast as they can. But if they do decide to make any gameplay changes, they would talk with the community before making those changes. Um, they do have the ability, though, to add new content and features to Little Alchemist Remastered. But again, they just want to wait until they get the game out before they make any of those types of changes. And then kind of the last update on Little Alchemist Remastered came from Monty a couple of weeks back. Um, December 19th, he said, things are going well, hoping to have a first playable version of it in a few weeks. So those are kind of my updates on Little Alchemist Remastered. But um, that wasn't good enough for me. <laughs> so I decided, you know what, I need to talk to Monty. Uh, after my last video came out, I, um, I gathered questions from you guys, and there's about just over 60 questions that came in, and uh, he shared publicly uh, the, the next little quote, so I'm going to quote him. I know this is going to crush your expectations, but 38 of the 63 questions that you've asked are about specific features or about expanding the game beyond the scope of Little Alchemist Remastered. The answer to almost all of these questions is yes. Yes, we plan to improve, to expand, and to extend the game for many years to come. We also plan to develop new Little Alchemist games. I'm hoping that all of our grandkids have Little Alchemist games to play in the future. Today, I have no idea what that means. For example, I can't tell you if I'm going to add to, rebalance, or completely replace something like achievements, but I can tell you that this community will be a part of those decisions. We will create our feature and development roadmap in conversation with you, our core community. So that was kind of his, his general response to most of your guys' questions. So if you asked a question, more than likely your answer was yes. <laughs> we do want to do that. We don't know when we'll do it, but we, we are looking into it type of an answer, okay? But um, again, that wasn't good enough for me. So I talked to, I talked to him. And uh, I got a little bit more information from him on Little Alchemist Remastered. And he let, me to he let me know that they're currently in sprint number 11 of their production of the game. Um, sprints. Now, I didn't know what that was. I was like, are they running? Like, <laughs> we're in sprint number 11. We're going to finish this game. No, no. So apparently that's, that's a coding term. Sprints are two-week development cycles. So basically the team defines the next two weeks we're going to be working on this specific project or this part of the game or this aspect or this feature. And um, they work on that for those two weeks, and that's a sprint. Uh, he said that they're about 20 weeks into the Little Alchemist Remastered development. The game is looking great. 
and the team's making solid progress. This current sprint that they're in, Sprint 11, is focusing on arena and event play. So they're trying to make sure that when you're doing the arena and doing the events, everything works as intended, just like it is in the current game, and fixing anything that needs to be fixed in that. Now, as he shared previously in the past, there are outstanding issues that add risk to delivery dates. Um, when they have to do user data recovery or migrating them, um, getting an independent login for the game is going to add some time and cloud saving. They're confident that they're going to have those issues resolved, but they might have to wait a bit to sort it out, to, um, to figure out the best way to safely migrate and support the existing players. So he's hoping to have an internal playable alpha by the end of February for his team to be working on and playing on and testing and, and working on. Um, but there's still a lot to do, but they're very happy with the progress so far. So if they're going to have an alpha build by the end of February, let's just call it early March, um, my guess is... It's, it's still probably three to six months out from there. So even though it was supposed to be first half of 2022, it might be early summer of 2022, or it could be as far as the fall. I don't know. Don't quote me on that. But hearing that the, the first alpha playable build that they're going to have is the end of February, beginning of March, it might be a little bit later than we hoped. Unfortunately, I'm, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm just sharing with you what I got. Um, now, what he told me also is once they have a faithful reproduction of the current game, running in Unity and supporting new devices, etc. They're going to start talking to us, the community, about things that we want to change. Um, they should have the ability to do just about anything to the game at that point, so it should be lots of fun to explore that with us. Um, now, I know you, you probably are wondering, okay, that's great that they want to explore things with us, but do you have more? Yes, I asked him, what, what exactly are you thinking about? And so he said, there's a lot of things that I personally want to change, but I'm not the target player. I'm not the active player you guys are, but I want to get that master list from each and every one of us. So that's something that we could be working on, our master list of what we'd like to see changed in Little Alchemist Remastered, but stuff that he would like to explore. So these are things that potentially could be added, changed, not saying that they are going to, but these are things that he would want to explore if he was going to be making the game different. Give you a little suspense there with my cup drink. First, he wants to expand the narrative campaign. So I don't know if that just means adding new dialogue to each of the bosses or actually maybe adding a third island. I'd love to see a third island. Um, they released Island 2 in like 2015. I think the original one came out in 2014. So it's been a long time since we've had any new bosses to fight. Um, that would obviously have to fix a lot of things because... How are we going to fight them? The, the bosses that are there now, I don't even fight the Dark Alchemist. He's too hard to beat. <laughs> so they'd have to rebalance them as well if they're going to expand the narrative campaign or at least come up with a new solution. Um, rethink the way ties work. I know we've already talked about that a little bit, but he'd like to really fix tiebreaker. And so that's an area that he'd want to, to think about. Another thing he'd like to do, unlocking alchemist types at each arena rank tier, which we talked about earlier as well, where maybe tier uh, level 1s tied to gold, level 2s to diamond, level 3s to masters. Uh, rethinking the research, maybe speeding up research by playing the game. So the more, more you're playing, the faster your research goes. That's an interesting idea. Uh, maybe exploring a path to upgrading all cards to onyx. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, that was something he kind of discussed on Discord. But um, it's an interesting idea being able to upgrade any card you own to an Onyx version. Um, obviously, something that Winter would love to hear, adding new cards and new Alchemist types. So I know he's wanted to have new cards. Uh, specifically, he wants the Onyx version of Precious Ring Lore. But uh, <laughs> even new cards that are more Lord of the Rings themed, I think he'd be happy with. Um, improving the achievements. I, I listed a couple just funny achievements I thought of for purchasing packs the other day, but I think it would be nice to have additional achievements and rewards that go along with those achievements um, outside of just the, um, the images that you get normally. Something else he talked about was exploring adding a battle pass system. A way to unlock new cards or new alchemist types would be through that battle pass system. Kind of a cool idea. 
And then lastly, he said rebalancing the economy. So I'm not sure exactly what he meant by that. I'm sure there's some areas that um, are a little bit out of whack, but uh, rebalancing the economy is what he said specifically. And he said, he just wanted to reiterate, I really want this to be guided by the community. So we would prioritize the stuff that everyone in the community says they want first in the game. That's the stuff that they would work on first. Now I had asked him uh, to follow up because he had said that one of the things that's gonna take some time is figuring out how to independently log into the game rather than using you know, a Game Center or um, the Game Center or Google Play Store. Um, and he said, we still need to figure this out. What we might end up doing is use Game Center and Google Play authentication that currently exists for the game. And this would allow everyone to access their account across devices on the same system. Uh, so if you know I'm playing on my iPad or my iPhone, it would work. Or if I'm playing on my Google tablet or my Google um, phone, it would work type of a thing. Um, but he'd like to have something like a monumental account that you can use for authentication across all platforms. So that way, if you happen to have a Google tablet and an iPhone, you would be able to play on each of those devices on the same account rather than having an account for Google and an account for iOS. Um, that's something they actually do in another game that they own called Mythgard, where they actually let you log into multiple devices um, through a third-party login system. Uh, when they launch, he hopes it's just better than what the current implementation is, and then they'll be able to add to it. The good news is, is that if you replace your old iPhone with a new iPhone, it should update automatically and instead of a cross your fingers and hope your cloud save is current <laughs> method that's in place right now. So um, part of the reason why it's, it's kind of a cross your fingers and hope that it works thing right now is because it's using old coding for Game Center and Google Play Store that isn't really use, usable anymore. So at least they'll have it updated so it should work as intended and also update regularly. Um, but we might experience some hiccups when we try to do the transfer from the current game to Little Alchemist Remaster. And then someone had asked me to see if we would be able to play the beta version whenever that comes out. And he told me that they use Test Flight to play early versions of the build, and he doubts that they'll make a pre-release version available to the public, but it is possible. Generally, they try to get feedback from us before they make any changes to the game, and that saves a ton of time on wasted development. I know one of the things I always talk about is um, RuneScape. RuneScape's like that. They, they get feedback from their player base before they make a change, then they spend a bunch of time on it, and then they decide to can it anyway. But that, that's a topic for another time. <laughs> um, all right, I have another section here. I told you guys it's going to be long, so I'm sorry, but this is all good information. Next, I have a section that I just want to call Monty's ramblings, for lack of a better term. These are things that he's just kind of shared on Discord, and I really didn't know where else to put them. So um, these are just things that he said that kind of are thoughts that he has. Doesn't necessarily mean that these types of changes would come to the game. It's just something that he threw out there and to, to kind of get people's feedback on. So first... He said, he thinks every card should exist in gold, diamond, and onyx rarities. And that there should be a craft, upgrade, and fuse path to any gold card to get to onyx. He hasn't done any work on what the math would be or how that would design would work. But he thinks it's something that would be possible to do in the game. Another thing he talked about a little bit was portal events versus campaign, and I'll just kind of read this to you. This is just kind of his personal opinion on it. I don't want the portal events and campaign to be identical, but I want them to have a similar value to players. If portal events lead to dust and specific gold combo cards, then campaign battles should lead to something that the player values in a similar way. So here's two ideas. Maybe campaign battles are the best source of experience. If you want to gain levels, Campaign battles would be the absolute best way to accomplish that. But maybe we find a way to make specific cards more valuable. Uh, for example, maybe I need more knight cards so I can fuse them on that path to make an onyx knight. So I farm Gwen because I know that she's the best source of knight cards in the game. Each path that we offer a player should have an intrinsic value to it. 
I don't want to have a crappy alternative to portal events. I want to give the player the ability to make smart choices about what's most valuable to them at that moment, and then they can act on it. And he, he followed that up. Someone asked a question, and he said, I'm not worried about vicious circles in the portal events. I'm worried about further dis dis distancing portal events from campaign battles in terms of the value that they give. I reduce the energy cost of campaign events to increase their value. I want to reduce it more, but I worry about creating a vicious circle where you never run out of energy. So um, that was something that we had talked to him about was uh, he lowered the energy cost for all battles by one, and uh, there was talk about maybe doing it again, so making it drop down by two instead of by one. Uh, and it gets you really close if you're using like XP plus to being able to just, I don't think anyone would be able to do it, but let's say you battle Dark Alchemist, the, the three, I guess it'd be four times by that point, um, you would get enough experience there that you could potentially um, level up very quickly within a, an hour and a half or something, and then you get your next level up. Um, but if you made it down too low, like everyone only cost one energy regardless of boss, then you could theoretically battle bosses continuously without ever having that pause in the story mode. Um, and I think that's something that he doesn't want to do because then people could game the system or ruin the system. So just, just a, a little thing that he mentioned. Another thing he said was, I prefer to create models and explore the edge cases when I make a change to the game's economy. Sometimes I can make small changes and measure what happens. You'll hear me talk about baby steps a lot, but these will only take you so far. I don't agree that players want to avoid interesting decisions. I find that interesting decisions make a great game experience even more rich. That said, if the only decision in the game is, where can I get the most dust per point of energy, then I, as a creator of the game, have failed to provide interesting decisions for my players. So what I think that tells me is, he might be wanting to make the events always on, and then you have to decide, do I want to do this event for the, the value of getting this specific card that I might already have three copies of, or do I want to continue in the um, main story mode and keep grinding this for this card that I want so I can upgrade it? And um, that's kind of an interesting idea. Uh, I think right now most of us say, let's go fight Clyde because he's the best experience to, for dust. <laughs> and uh, I like the idea of, you know what, I right now want to focus on leveling up my knight card, so I'm going to fight Gwen until I get enough knight cards to, to level it up to a gold version or an onyx version or something like that in the future. So that's kind of a cool idea I think he had. Uh, one other idea, and I have a photo for this one. He said, an idea that we've been exploring was a card type called a replicator, basically a card that can create new cards. And he shared this photo. Let me see if I can move this over. He shared this photo with us today on the Discord of uh, Frog Loki, which he called Froggy. And Froggy was the hero subtype version. There was also a broodmother, a cloning machine, a 3D printer, a magic mirror, so on and so forth. So the idea would be that... Um, I don't know if this is exactly what he meant by this, so, so forgive me. He didn't actually clarify this because it just got posted today and he didn't do any follow-ups after this. But someone suggested, so does that mean like if I copied, I used a replicator card with my like space card, would it be able to make any space combo? And I thought that's kind of cool. So it's kind of like a, uh, a Joker card where it combos with any card in your hand with whatever combos it can make. I don't know how they would implement that or how that would work. Um, the other thing it could be is... Uh, maybe when you play it, it replaces one of the cards in your hand with itself. I, I don't know. I don't know what a replicator is, but that's just something he talked about. So I'll say that again. It's an idea that they're using called a replicator, basically a card that can create new cards. Froggy was the hero subtype version. There was a broodmother, a cloning machine, a 3D printer, a magic mirror, etc. So kind of cool. I think it looks awesome. Uh, for those of you that don't know, um, there's a Frog Thor in the Marvel MCU, but there's not a frog Loki. So I think this was just kind of a spin on that because there's the alligator Loki, but there's not a frog Loki, but if there was, it'd probably look something like this. So I like that, it's a, it's a fun little picture. Uh, continuing on though, there is another set of pictures I wanted to share with you. And these are pictures that they've posted on the Monumental website. So I figured they're fair game to share with you guys. 
Um, so I'm just going to kind of go through these. This is concept art that they have on their current live website. So first, we've got this guy. He is um, f supposed to be a character from the Elder Scrolls. He's a dragonborn. So uh, just kind of a, a fun little thing here to see. I uh, think that'd be a, a nice little addition to the game. Another card that they have up there. I think this one's really up the little alchemist alley. This is Dr. Uh, Frank and Stein. Because he's like a mad scientist with a, a hot dog or a Frank and a, a beer Stein in his other hand. I think it's hilarious. It's, it, the puns are wonderful in this game, and that's a good example of one. Uh, another piece that they have on their page, and I'll show you the, the close-up version, and then I'll show you the far away version of this banner, but... Um, they have a little pink Grogu baby doll thing. I know it's kind of hard to see there, but kind of a pink version of Grogu. I'm not really sure what's going on with that, but I thought it was kind of cool. Um, in addition to that, it's like a whole banner. So let me show you the full banner. It also has like the evil alchemist dude on the other end, the necromancer. That That's like the actual necromancer that's in the game right now, just redesigned for this game. So it's kind of a cool little skin to see. And that's, that's the background there. It might look familiar to That's the battle background. So it's just kind of a different layout for it. Uh, next, just the Little Alchemist logo, a little bit of a changed version to it, which is kind of fun. We've got, of course, you can't have this game without the actual... Uh, Magician's Apprentice person, or the little alchemist, I should say. So there's a photo of what they look like in the redesigned game. So just kind of a, a little bit of an updated character. And then one more. Um, this one just kind of shows a couple of the different characters that are in the game existing right now. You've got the Dracula over there. You've got Bat down here. Um, you've got the, um, oh gosh, what is this guy called? He's a 9-9 card. I don't know. <laughs> but anywho, you got all sorts of characters here that are already in the game, just kind of redrawn in, in a new, but still similar style. And I kind of like that, that they're, they're new. Yeah, War God. Thank you. Thank you. I forgot. Um, and they got the Monkey Shaman or whatever that guy's called. I don't know. And, and you got someone else back there too. Yeah. Monkey King. Thank you. Uh, but and a bunch of alchemist bottles down below. So that's that's kind of fun stuff there, but definitely it's a, it's a similar art style but but a slightly different art style. So anywho, I wanted to end this video on one more quote from Monty and I know this is a very long video. So if you've stayed this whole time, thank you so much. Uh, but I wanted to end with this quote because I think it it kind of shows you the heart of monumental and what their vision is, what their core goal is for this game. So I'm just going to read this word for word from Monty. I feel like we've done a pretty good job of focusing on near-term quality of life improvements and long-term higher ideals of things. These explorations, and even the small decisions, are important because they can have a long-term impact on the game. I bought Little Alchemist because I think this game is just in its infancy. I'm hoping that people will be playing this game for another decade or two. And really, I think that's the, that's the best thing I can leave this video on, is knowing that I think we're in, I know we're in good hands. We've got someone here that actually cares about this game, cares about what we think, and wants this game to grow and thrive based on the decisions that we make as a community. So... That's my whole update for you guys today. Thank you for joining me. I know this was a long one, and I'm sorry, but it's got a bunch of good information in it. And hopefully, 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 um, we'll have more of these updates in the future when we get more information. Um, I want to say a big thank you, yes, Joe, to Monumental Team, especially Monty, obviously, the owner of the company, and John Eric, who is, is our in-house resident tech. Um, Monty said several times to me, both publicly and in private, that John Eric's kind of his right-hand man guy. He's been working with him for a decade. They've, they've worked together at multiple companies. And he's never seen John Eric so happy as, as he's been when he works on this game. And so um, he, he, this is his favorite part of his, his job, is coming up with ideas, improvements, changes for our game. 
And uh, I just really love the fact that we've got people who actually care about us, care about this game, working on it now. And uh, I hope you guys are too. But uh, with that being said, thank you for joining me today. Again, this is Tap Dog with Little Alchemist Helper. Catch me live on my Twitch channel, which is what I'm doing right now. And you can also join us on Discord if you have any questions, need help, want some advice. That's the place to go. All right. Take care.